In this video, we are going to be slipstreaming SATA drivers into a Windows XP installation disk. Enjoy! Alright, hello YouTube. Um, and as you saw in the intro, today we're going to be setting up Intel, uh, not Intel, SATA drivers on a Windows XP installation disk. Slipstreaming them is a technical word. So, what you want to do is go to your manufacturer's website. If they don't have the floppy version, you do not want an EXE. You need the extracted files. Now, most of the time now you can get the F6 floppy thing. And what you want to do is go... Basically, I'm assuming you have an Intel board. You can go to AMD if you have them, but most people would have an uh, Intel one. So, what you want to do is go to Intel and type in your driver. Well, I'm just going to say you get your driver. Find Windows XP we're making this for a Windows XP installation disk then find the right driver and this one is a workstation board and I'm going to click on it now you want to download this one F6 floppy see how it's called F6 floppy this one isn't F6 floppy is the one you want because F6 floppy comes in a zip archive like this and you just want this little INF file so what you want to do is download it. So, you know, press download, accept their license agreement, and then save it wherever you want. After you've saved it, you'll get a little folder like this. I'll probably won't, I'll extract it to another folder to show you how to do it. You want to make a new folder on your desktop, that's what you want to do. And call that, I don't know, drivers. Yes. Now open up those files. This might look daunting to you, but these are quite simple. Open the file you just call the folder it's coming called drivers. Highlight all the drivers apart from this blank folder up here and drag them over. You need WinRAR to do this. I know it's a zip archive, you don't. You can just extract them or drag them out like I just did there. You do need Magic ISO or WinRAR at some point in time to do this and the reason for that will be shown soon so once you've done that you'll have these files you can close out so let's temporarily put that in my recycle bin anyway now you've got those you will need an application called Enlight the link in the description will be there we, I'm going to put a link in the description so you need to install that double click it and you'll get a warning press yes it's alright it's not a dangerous application um, I'm assuming you know how to install it. Select your language, although I only installed the English language. Press next. Locate your extracted files of Windows XP. If you don't have these, what you want to do is minimize. This is where you need a Windows XP DVD or an ISO. I, if you have a DVD, you open the files of your DVD. Sorry, I have Halo in my DVD drive as an example. Right click it and just press open like that and then copy them out to a folder if you have an ISO browse to the, the ISO image I have it on my desktop uh, here it is what you want to do is double click it this is where magic ISO is handy Handy. if you don't have ma magic ISO right click it open with and select WinRAR Link in the description will be for WinRAR and there will be a link in the description Magic ISO. But I'm going to show the Magic ISO way because it's easier. And all you want to do with this is right click it and then press hover over Magic ISO and press extract to. Browse to a folder. Um, I've say made a folder on my desktop called XP files as you might have seen. And I'm going to select that and tick OK and it will start extracting. Now I'm going to pause why it extracts because we'll be here for a very long time otherwise. Okay, now once that is complete you'll have all these files. You can happily just press X on that. Then open up the minimized WinRAR, click browse. Locate the folder you just extracted the, driver, the files to, the XP installation files. In this case it's these ones. You press OK. And when, now let Enlight do its thing of detecting. This has Service Pack 3 pre installed. Press next. Just press next again. 
Now here's the bit where you can do all sorts of cool things. I will show another video on how to use all this cool stuff on Enlight, but that's not for today. So what I'm going to show you is how to integrate drivers. So all you want to do is click on drivers and click on bootable ISO. Then press next. Now press insert on this part. Now you want to select single driver. Let it load up and locate your drivers. And again I have mine saved on the desktop as drivers. Now select IAHCI.inf. Press open. Now you will have a bunch of controllers come up, as you can see. Now you want to do is highlight them by pressing Control A. Click on one and press Control A, and they'll all be highlighted. Then just click OK, and all of them are bulked in now. Press Next. Do you want to start pro the process? Just press Yes. Now it's simply going to integrate all our drivers. That's not going to take long because drivers are like a few kilobytes, I think. Some are about a meg. But it's only a bit of code that helps the operating system communicate with the SATA hard disk. And the reason we need the SATA drivers is so the operating system can detect the hard drive while installing the operating system. While it's installing. I did this with Windows 2000 before on our computer. And it's necessary for XP as well, as it doesn't have natural support. Okay, so now we're finished. Just press next. Now you'll get to this bit where you can create an image or burn it straight to a DVD. I'm just going to create an image and I'm going to label it YouTube because that's already been highlighted. The ISO engine, you can change this, but just leave it as default. And then press make ISO. Name it, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call this um, SATA XP, I'm going to call it. Or underscore, because underscore is quite clever. Just press save. Now it's going to start to make the file for you. This shouldn't take very long. It's weird. It's taking a little while. Uh, it shouldn't take that long. Um, I'm on a laptop that's a bit um, ain't got like a crazy hard drive in it like most some computers have, but it's all right. This is going to take a little minute, but once this is done, you're going to have an ISO, and then you can burn it directly to a DVD. I will show that in another part, but I haven't got that part now. Now you just press next press finish you're done you now have your ISO save wherever you saved it now because I named it as SATA XP if you forget where to say it, you saved it just type it in here I'm going to drag it to the desktop voila you have a disk image of Windows XP now to directly put this on a CD you simply right click it and then um, open with Windows Disk Image Burner and then you'd get an option to put a DVD in. See? And then you're done. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, rate, subscribe and yeah.